For five days, I continued in a meditative state of light samadhi. Being in this state, I could even do something. I could walk. I could even answer questions. But at the same time, my consciousness was so wide and extensional that I was absolutely indifferent to the questions I was asked. It made no difference to me if I had food and water or not. I didn't even know if I needed oxygen to breathe or not. At that time, I didn't have deep understanding of what was going on. But the state that emerged was so supportive, so near and dear, that I didn't want to come out of it anymore. My companions who were together with me at that moment, they were looking after my body. I had a friend then, who now has already left his body. He was a professional in recognition of such states, through physiognomy, through eyes and body reactions. He studied this subject in great detail. When he saw me, he cried, that's it, that's it, he has achieved it. Later, I understood that it wasn't a full achievement. It wasn't the final aim we were going towards. It was partial, but very high achievement. It was really high. But at that time, I didn't care if I achieved anything or not. I was in the state of absolute peace and tranquility. I'd like you to experience at least a part of samadhi. I mean the following state. You are absolutely free, calm, and cool-headed. You can feel everything, but at the same time, there isn't anything in this life that could be able to disturb you. You can do everything, but you don't need anything. Once someone told me, you haven't eaten for a few days. You must eat something. I answered, looking at my companions. I can do it if it's necessary, but I'm free from it. When they invited me to practice, when you are in such a state, spiritual practice isn't necessary, and you don't need to do it anymore. I said, yes, let's go, but I don't need practicing. You don't even need to say anything because everything happens by itself. Your perception isn't one-dimensional anymore. That's not an easy subject to express. Your perception has become voluminous or tri-dimensional. Whatever people are going to say, you know about it beforehand. You know about people's intentions. You know what is going on, where and how. But at the same time, you're absolutely free from it and you're not even interested in it. An ordinary mind thinks, if I had clairvoyance, I'd know more about things. But the the fact is that being in samadhi, you already know everything. Why know anything if you already are everything? Being in this state, does one have any motivation or intention in his mind? Neither motivation, no intention, because one possesses everything. And now I'm only talking about the first stage of samadhi, sabhikalpa samadhi. Not to mention nirbhikalpa samadhi. In sabhikalpa samadhi, I could move. I'm talking now about the first days of my samadhi period, which lasted five days. As I understood later, I passed the sabhikalpa stage very quickly and then entered the nirbhikalpa stage. After a while, I examined my experience thoroughly, comparing and analyzing everything. Such states emerged in my life a few times. These were different variations of samadhi. It is Nirbi Kalpa Samadhi that a person can stay in for long or even forever. But at that time, the elements of Nirbi Kalpa Samadhi I experienced were not strong enough to fix and prolong them. So on the fifth day, this state started melting away. I was very disappointed and took it hard. Little by little, a feeling of being mortal began to overpower. It was extremely discomfortable. The feeling of absolute comfort and pure, quiet joy beyond 
emotions and exultation, this state started vanishing. I asked, I don't want to lose it. Let it continue. I already was in the state of duality and I was asking the Supreme, let this state continue. And I went on asking, it's me, I'm complete in this state. In this state, I'm really he who I am. But when I found myself in the astral samadhi, there is such an expression, astral samadhi. I realized that being in this new state, I experienced my true nature and more perfection. The world has completely changed for me. I realized the principle of oneness which the universe is based upon. This universe was me, and I was this universe. This experience was given to me by Bhagavan Sri Satya Sai Baba. I addressed him while I was practicing. He is always with me when I am practicing Kriya. I'm practicing now to share Kriya with everyone. He gave me the feeling that every element, every quantum of this universe was him and me together. At the same time, I realized that there was a distance, though a tiny one, between something that was me and something that was Sai, as a Satguru. As I've already said, it's extremely difficult to describe the state I experienced. However, now I have to do it. Being in this state, a person experiences oneness. And it doesn't mean I'm one whole with something. You become this something, you are that. And the main point is, I haven't become that. I am and always was that. I mean that entering samadhi, you don't go upwards. You come from above and suddenly find yourself. As it happens, you have always been that, and that is what you really are. Being in this state, you can't characterize and make judgments. You just stay in this and being conscious of your divinity. You might as well say that you know everything within your area. A super incomprehensible being that is you at the moment knows and understands everything within his area, i.e., within the area of his possible reach. How can I explain this? You embrace everything, that is the universe and that is, at the same time you yourself. The state I have just described isn't the highest stage of samadhi yet, that's only the astral samadhi. But you are already able to embrace everything and understand how the universe is set up. The universe is made of you, and you know who you are in this universe. You penetrate all the worlds at the same time. On the way to such a state, you can see where different lokas are where souls head to after death. You can see where the souls of Christian and Zen devotees make their ways to. You can also find the ways of teachers. The famous master of Samadhi Yoga, Samnath Giri Maharaj, told that he had flown round the whole universe for 40 days. I didn't think of him at that moment, but I saw all the planes and lokas he was in and understood his essentiality. Such things happen on the way to the astral samadhi. Then the universe disappeared and I became everything. I understood that I had always been everything. At that moment I was aware of every element, every particle of light. All and everything was made of light. All the universe was like a fluid mass of light. How can you imagine that? That was light and liquid at the same time. It looked like a kind of semi-fluid mass of myself. And this mass was the whole universe which gives birth to different worlds. I can't describe it in any other way. Then there were other, higher types of samadhi. What does astral samadhi mean? This is my own term, in fact. Astral samadhi is a term I use to define the following state. Being in this state, you can fully understand what all the astral world or the whole universe consists of. This is our astral manifestation. Astral projection is not an astral plane between the mental and the physical planes. But the astral projection includes the astral plane as well as the mental one. I mean that our universe is created by someone. Actually, you are the universe and all the other worlds. 
I call it astra, or something star-like, or cosmic and universal. In fact, you become that. You become that and then understand that all these things appeared through you. As a matter of fact, this is a level of Brahma. If I may say so, and if it is possible to draw such an analogy, but I wouldn't like to draw comparisons. You've said that samadhi arises. What is the reason for its uprising? What makes its emergence possible? The voice of your heart and the work of spirit within you. Every person comes to this earth with the sole purpose to reach the oneness of the soul with the spirit. The spirit is the creator himself. The soul is something that originated from the creator. The task of the soul is to come back and the voice of your soul will never let you alone. It will always create conditions to make you, just for once, experience some states close to samadhi, to the feeling of love or to compassion. By the way, love and compassion are the elements of samadhi too. When you find yourself in this state, you'll feel something that will make you long for this state for the rest of your life. It depends on your spiritual practicing during your previous lives, your feelings and determination to reach redemption should have been awakened in your previous incarnations. It also depends on what you were doing during your former lives. There are some people who experience this state even without realizing that it is samadhi. Suppose one is living a common life and isn't interested in yoga. Though he has an attachment to the outer world, he, from time to time, experiences some flying feelings which lead him to the higher stage of awareness. Plans are revealing themselves. Samadhi is a state which can be divided into a few levels. Let me review Sabikalpa Samadhi and Nirbikalpa Samadhi, or the Buddhist terms for the same, Samprajniyat Samadhi and Asamprajniyat Samadhi. They can also be divided into a few levels, cosmic consciousness, universal cosmic consciousness. Nirbikalpa Samadhi allows to live in the world and to mix with people. But at the same time, to be out of this world. It allows to find the way of focusing your consciousness so that to mix with people. At the same time, this type of Samadhi makes it impossible not to lose your high awareness and to keep your understanding of who you really are. This awareness will never be lost again. Being in Sabikalpa Samadhi, you enter Enter the state of disappearing and dissolve in your higher self. Then you return, bringing with you all the qualities that made your personality earlier. These qualities remain, so you'll need further developing. What is Suruba Samadhi? Saruba Samadhi is the highest manifestation of divinity in this life. This level of Samadhi allows a person to bring divinity into life. Kriya says that bringing divinity into life and spiritualization of material nature is the highest purpose of a man. Saruba Samadhi is a state you enter after reaching Nirbikalpa Sahaj Samadhi. Being in this state, you are able to bring divinity into life and change space. Being in Nirbikalpa Samadhi, you can get an experience of Saruba Samadhi either in a strong or in a light form. Anyway, people will feel it. Bringing divinity into life, do it gently and with care because this state can kill. Being in the state of Saruba Samadhi, you become an extremely powerful transmitter of energy. This can have an adverse effect on people's health and consciousness. So you should lower the pressure to the greatest possible extent. Reduce the intensity of your feelings as much as you can. Because being in this state, a person becomes so powerful that can kill or burn someone he is looking at. When masters are in this state of consciousness, they don't look into the eyes of people very often, though people want it. So people sometimes ask why masters don't like looking straight into people's eyes and even wear glasses. Masters are afraid to do harm. They certainly don't want to do it, but their state can have such a side effect. Sometimes people feel the master's power when he is looking full into one's face. At that moment, the person's conscious starts awakening, and his ego and self-esteem might be wounded. 
Therefore, masters prefer to look at the heart region or the other way. So it's possible to look through the person, but not to gaze at him. When the state is overcoming you, it's better to close your eyes and go inwards, being someone who gives of oneself to people. Can one enter samadhi at will? Yes, it should be the only wish. Yes, you can do it, and you should set your heart on it. In fact, this desire is egoistic. It looks like this. I want to enter samadhi. I don't know what it is, but I want because I've heard it's cool. However, let it be the beginning. Then you should keep the only desire. He and I are one. At this moment, samadhi happens. To enter samadhi at will, as you say, it's necessary to get rid of oneself. It's necessary to abandon your body, your mind, and everything you possess and ever possessed. You should leave all of this unattended. Then samadhi will happen. Anyway, at the very least, you'll enter a very deep meditation. Let me summarize. Samadhi is a state beyond your personality and ego, as well as beyond your subconscious mind. This is a state of superconsciousness. Samadhi is cosmic consciousness, objective consciousness which is beyond subjectivism. Samadhi is the purpose of Kriya, yoga of the high path. In samadhi, infinite cosmic consciousness fully absorbs mortal human consciousness. And the body consciousness, which limits people, disappears, melting away in the infinite cosmic consciousness of the one who you really are. This is samadhi. It is unity with your higher self. It is a state which allows you to find out me is me. So I came to the level of astral self-awareness and understood that I'm the one who appeared as the whole universe. Then I saw that I'm the one who the universe came from, and I'm not the part of the universe anymore. As I've already said, it's difficult to describe. Perceiving oneself as a part of the universe is also an element of deep meditation, of samadhi. But I've found that I'm the universe itself. Then the moment comes when you realize that I is something that the universe comes from. Then your self-awareness goes up to an even higher level. Such self-awareness looks like this. Who am I in relation to myself? If everything comes out of me, I'd like to know who I really am in relation to myself. This is the moment when the new plane of your being, or of your consciousness, reveals itself. You start realizing your infinite self in terms of the presence of the higher self. There is only I, and there isn't anything except I. There is no God, no Babaji, no universe. There is absolutely nothing. There is only I. This I is limitless and isn't related to anything. It is in itself. It's eternal, indestructible, and indivisible. It is one. It is one without another. There isn't even a sign of anything else. There isn't anything except I. The principle I am remains forever. It's eternal. It's extremely difficult to return from this state, to continue living in this delusive physical world and in this delusive physical body as well as in all the bodies, as it is difficult to come back. You suddenly understand that it's necessary to disengage. This is your decision, your highest decision. As soon as you divided yourself from yourself, you suddenly find that you've been manifested as the phenomenon of nature. Then you find your star system. That's not at all easy. 
Then you find your solar system. After that, you find the Earth, and so on. These are the stages you pass while coming back. These processes definitely take place. Being in this state, you again and again form something that belongs to you, a sort of matrix which is key for crystallizing your body. That is amazing. Such experience is absolutely incomparable. Once I told you that Sai Baba had given me an experience of complete dissolution, this was an astral samadhi, samadhi of an astral form or samadhi of an astral being. During this experience, my body was recomposed. Every element of this body and every element of an atom, an atom is also composed of elements, is light. I saw everything with my own eyes, but now I don't mean physical eyes. I was in the state of samadhi and was fully aware of recomposing my body. I couldn't walk for some period of time because my body didn't work and I had to adjust to perceptions again. It was an extraordinary experience. Hardly surprisingly, some masters can demonstrate the full dissolution of the body. Sometimes they leave only clothes and hair. But very often, after their dissolution, only the iridescent light is left. It is by no means a simple demonstration, it's a stage of development. A master passes this stage and disappears, but there are some people who see it. I have knowledge given to me by Bhagavan Sri Satya Sai Baba and my own personal experience. All that allows me to understand how exactly it happens. Sometimes a person gets redemption without Saruba Samadhi but only through Nirbhakalpa Samadhi or Sahaj Samadhi. This person becomes Jivan Mukti or the one who has got liberation during his life. He doesn't need anything but works hard in the world, being at the same time out of this world. This is what Jesus Christ, the Ascended Master of the Love Ray, was talking about. What should you do then? You should practice so that to connect with your soul which is longing for spirit. Then you'll always hear a call that will never let you alone and you'll always know which direction to follow. Let your divine conscience be a real beacon for you. A beacon for you should be anything that your soul is calling you to. Learn to feel your inwardness which is beyond analysis. Any analysis is external and superficial. Masters say your mind should be centered on the heart. So center it on yourself. Heart is a philosophical idea. But actually, your heart center as a part of your body possesses great knowledge. Inside your physical heart, there is a sacral place. From there, you can get to the space of communication with the Creator. Not only in the brain neurons. There are special portals which directly connect us with transcendental, but in the heart too. It's possible to work with this sacral place. You should talk to your heart and settle with it. Your heart is the only body organ which can't be commanded. All the other organs can be given orders because you possess psychic energy and can control your body. You are a personality which is striving for the essence. Or vice versa, you are the essence which is manifested as a personality. So all that's been about samadhi. That's generally speaking in a simplistic, superficial way. 